Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. Well, no doubt about it, the sound of traffic everywhere. <laughs> Smell of spices in the air. I am finally in India. And right now, I am in the city of Mumbai. This is, again, a place I've been wanting to come to for oh so long because Indian food, one of my favorite foods in the world. Because if you break it down, all the characteristics of Indian food, I love all of that. I mean, it's spicy, it's savory, there are a ton of variety. It typically goes really good with rice, all the things I love. So Mumbai really special is that it's really a, a gathering, a melting pot of people from all different backgrounds in India. This is the fourth most populated city in the world. Like I said, people come here from all around the country, bring their different backgrounds, cultures, and of course, cuisines. So in Mumbai, I'm really gonna be able to get a taste of, well, India. Let's get started. My first stop, just to get things started, is a really traditional Indian dish called Pavaji. And Pav means bread, and Bhaji means pounded and grounded vegetables and spice. Everything is bubbling, it looks like it's being kind of cooked on a flying saucer. My first traditional dish here in India. Cannot wait to taste this thing. Thank you, wow. Is that a stick of butter? That was a surprise, I mean, it's not a huge plate, but there's literally like a quarter of a stick or maybe even half a stick of butter that, that was in this little plate. And that thing is melting. And I'm supposed to mix, mix in this butter. Fresh herbs on top, it looks like some cilantro. Mm. This thing smells so incredible, guys. Oh, thank you. Wow. The buns is also covered in butter. And they give you a little dish of raw onions, a little tiny wedge of lemon, and some spices on top of everything. And I think I'm supposed to pour this in as well. Yeah. All of it? getting some confirmation around me. People are laughing at me. I'm gonna add a little bit. I'm gonna gauge people's reaction and when I'm... More, a lot, everything, all of it. Not all, okay, okay. All right, thank you. And what everyone is doing is they're taking these little butter soaked buns, let that dive in and just grab a bunch of that pulverized veggies. Oh my. That is deeply, butterly satisfying. That was probably the most decadent bite of, uh, of a snack I've ever had in my life. But guys, this is amazing. This dish with the potatoes and the chickpeas and the butter is so incredibly creamy. The flavor of this dish is just beyond worse. And this is called Papaji Masala. So there are a ton of spices grounded and, and infused in this dish. So to me, it's really interesting because you got all that spice. Then you just got this, this, the, the, the raw, barbaric, carnal flavors of the butter and the toasted bun. It just tastes so complex, yet simple at the same time, but utterly, 100% delicious. I definitely like mine with more of the onions. I love that crunch. I love the refreshing onion flavors. I mean, I know I'm just getting started on my Indian food tour, but what a fantastic start this is. And this is probably the most I've ever enjoyed a vegetarian dish in my life. This thing is borderline addictive. I mean, I never had anything like this before in the US. Also, this is a snack. I can't wait to see what's coming up. After having a snack, well, let's go have another snack. And this is a really famous place that a lot of you guys recommend it. It's called Swati Snack. And we're gonna go for some chat. And chat in India means, well, it just means snacks. So, snacks part two. There's actually a wait for snacks. So, maybe about 15 minutes. Don't let the butter digest. Oh. Oh, check it out, guys. This is called a putina banki, or mint pancake. It's basically a thin rice pancake cooked in banana leaves. Like, I saw people eating this when I first walked in. Can I just like bottle this? We'll create like a scented alarm clock so I can wake up every day smelling this. Because it, it just makes you smile every time every time you take a sniff. It's just this beautiful aromatic roasted fragrance, plus this kind of hit of refreshingness from the mint. You guys ready to see what's under the covers? Let's take a peek. I feel so naughty right now. Look at this. I feel like I'm presenting a scroll, but in this case, a delicious edible rice scroll. That's green. And to eat this, what you do is you take a spoon. I love this part because uh, it requires a certain degree of finesse, which. I have none of, but when it comes to food, I'm gonna try. And you gently peel the rice pancake from the leaf. And then watch this thing just, oh no, I broke it. Oh, actually I did it wrong. I'm supposed to roll this, and this becomes a rice roll. I'm thinking this is a set of mint sauce. 
I love this so much. You will never know how much. I'm gonna try this without the sauce. The pancake itself, my God, this is so unique and unlike anything I, I, I would expect this to taste like. The pancake itself is not, is not that chewy. You see, look, it, it breaks apart pretty easily. It's just like a really, really gentle, really soft pancake. The sauce, this is extremely minty sauce. And I'm also gonna put on a chili in this bite. However you wanna eat this, like on its own, with a little mint sauce with the chili. Ain't no wrong way to do this. The flavor is so incredibly unique. The balance of the savory and mint flavors, is, it's so in sync, it, it's so perfect. This is the Shrikan, and what's really interesting about this is that it's got something savory and sweet on this plate right here, and check it out. It's really crumply roti. It's stuffed with spices, you can see right here, and ground lentil. You taste the lentil beans right away. Ooh, the spices just hit me. That's a late comer. I like that. Hey, better late than never, right? Mm. And you're supposed to take some of your roti and you add some potatoes to it. Let that deliciousness just wash all over you. And just when things are heating up, you get a little funky in your mouth and grab some of that yogurt. Oh, that's good. When the yogurt goes into your mouth, everything in your mouth just cools down. All that dancing, all that, all that craziness, the roti and the potato is, is having all that chemical reaction that's going on in your mouth. That all dissipates as soon as the smooth, delicious yogurt joins the party. And this is definitely smooth and delicious. I'm almost loving the yogurt more than his other two companions right here. That's insanely good. I gotta try all that again. Savory. Mm. Things are heating up. Pudding shows up. Everybody relaxes. This interesting piece of bread here, this is a masala roti. It looks like it's pretty dense. Again, you can see all the spices that's in here. It comes with some basin yogurt curry. And this is some sort of a plant that's fried first and, and then it's put in here. I, I never had this before, let me. The texture is kind of like that of a, of a potato. It's really creamy. And the curry itself has got masala spices in here. So it's a lot of spicy flavor. You can tell there's a ton of different spices in here. You're supposed to take your roti, grab some of that curry, and just enjoy. One thing I love about Indian food so much is just the complexity of all the spices and the ability for them all to work together so incredibly well. This roti, it's so ridiculously flavorful because of all the spices that's in here. A little crispy on the outside. But you take that, dip it in this curry. The spice level will go up, but at the same time, you get this nice, smooth, starchy texture from the bensam. I'm just wondering, but I want to add a little mint to it. I like that. Also, what I love about this dish and Indian food in general, foods that have a lot of different spices in there, as you chew, different spices hit your taste buds. It's like your taste buds are getting this really intense massage. And at the end of it, they're all just screaming one thing. Yum. This is another favorite item here. This roti, as you guys can see, is much darker than the last one. And it's mixed masala and lentil in this roti. And I can also see some sesame seeds, definitely a little char on the outside. Mm. I like that. Ooh. I really love this. A lot of hidden flavors in here. That I mean, looking at this, honestly, it kind of just looks like a like a really dense, not that flavorful, pretty hard piece of bread. Far from it. Oh my god, coriander! Look at this, fresh coriander that's cooked into this bread. That mixed with the sesame seeds. Wow, this is something amazing. All right, after a couple of snacks, I'm ready to get going. And a lot of you guys told me this is a must eat. Frankie's over on this street called Kaogali. It's like a lot of different food vendors here. I don't know what a Frankie is. I mean, I know a Frankie. I just don't know what an edible Frankie looks like. So let's let's order one. And there are like 30 options here. I think I'm gonna go for number 14. Paneer cheese says one Frankie. So I'm Mikey and this is Frankie. Frankie turns out to be a really thin crepe stuffed with, well, all sorts of things. But this one, I got it with paneer cheese and sage ones. A leaf almost landed on my pinky. Anyway, it's stuffed with paneer cheese and Szechuan sauce, which is actually the India version of, of Sichuan sauce, which is, of course, a spicy sauce. Like most food items I had today, this thing is hefty, it's substantial, it's also delicious. The cheese, you can see 
nice and creamy. This sauce, this sauce will light your whole mouth on fire. The outside is basically just a really thin, crispy roti. I'm really digging this because flavor is, is really heavy handed and I love substantial flavors. And I love how this whole ensemble just works well together. The cheese and the spicy sauce is kind of fighting each other, fighting for dominance. And at the end, the Seth one sauce definitely wins out because man, your mouth feels like it just got stabbed everywhere with pen noodles. Oh, oh. I didn't notice this before, just check this out. There's a big piece of potato in here. That's a surprisingly pleasant discovery because it just makes the whole thing even more creamy. All those things together makes this one of the best things I've had in India so far. Seriously, this is ridiculous. I feel like if I lived around here, I eat one of these every single day. You know, just chow down one of these right before nap time because this will put you down. Mm. Oh, God. We'll see what else this place has to offer. My mouth is still on fire a little bit and they're selling milk tea here. Thank you, wow. Ooh, ginger, a little sweet, a little milky. Really gingery, but a nice satisfying cup of milk tea. Right next to the milk tea place, there's a lassi place. Never had lassi India before? Let's solve that. So there, there's sweet lassi and there's salty lassi, so I'm getting the sweet lassi. This is a really popular place, by the way. And look at this. I never had lassi like this before. So malai is what you see on the surface here. Mm. This tastes like a sweeter, thicker version of a Beijing yogurt. I love Beijing yogurt because it's less tart and it's got more flavor than the typical yogurts you find in a grocery store. And this is even more salt. It's creamier, it's more flavorful, it's sweeter, it's less tart than even a Beijing yogurt. This is absolutely fantastic. The malai, that is awesome. It's almost like a milk curd. You can, you can chew it. It's just a clump of the gentlest, creamiest, softest piece of cheese. Mm. Oh, that's great. I mean, it's not like what you typically expect when you when you take a sip of lassi. I feel like it's, it's creamier than that, it's richer, and it's better. Gotta give this a try in India. You know, I just realized something. All the food I had so far today have been so delicious. I, I kind of forgot that none of them really had any meat in there. But all that is gonna change right now because I'm at a restaurant called uh, Bad Mia and they're making Romani roti. Look at the oven they're making out. It's kind of like the underside of a wok. And that guy is the roti master right there. Look at this. Yo, this guy has skills. Besides the fresh breads, these guys are making kebab on site. I got some chicken, lamb. This is gonna make up for all the meat that I didn't eat today. Just got all my food. Actually, it took about half an hour because this place is busy. And I got a bunch of items that they recommended. I really can't tell what's what right now, so uh, let's just grab one and open it. This is the Sigdi chicken leg, or the tandoori chicken leg. And of course, this is right off the fire. First bite of meat today. A lot of people recommended that I come here, and I really don't know how good this chicken is in, in compared to like other places. There might be a lot of better places out there in India, I'm sure there are. But for me, that was the greatest bite of tandoori chicken I've, I've ever had in my life. Hang on a second. It's like a fight between, I don't know, Bruce Lee and, and a Smurf. There, there's no comparison. Look how juicy this chicken is. It's got such a beautiful smoky flavor. Slightly charred on the outside gives it a nice tiny little crisp. But when you bite into this, it's like biting into a valley of, of spice. It tastes nothing like the tandoori chicken. I've had in a stage. The skin, beautifully slightly crisp, insanely juicy, a tad of sweetness, tons of heat hitting your tongue with every single bite. From the outside all the way to the meat by the bones, the flavor does not decrease as you dig into the surface. It just gets better and better with every single bite. This is mind blowing. This has completely changed what I thought I knew what tandoori chicken tastes like. This next thing, mutton kima roll, which is a mutton mint roll. This is the bread that I was seeing this guy make. By the way, this man's a machine. I've been here for like half an hour, are you tired? No? A new Rati every single 10 seconds. He's been doing it consistently for the last 40 minutes. Oh yeah, well, this is making my day all over the place. The Rati itself, that's unbelievable. This thing is tender, it's chewy. The Rati is so good, I wish like, instead of that basket, I can just sit there and, and open my mouth and he'll just throw all the, all the freshly cooked ones directly in here. It's good. I can taste all the different spices in here. And if it's just slightly less salt, this will be absolutely perfect. It's just like eating one of the most flavorful burrito you ever had in your life, which is the most awesome, awesome wrapper. I mean, oh, that's awesome, dude. I was actually about to head out of here and I ran into my friend Xiao. He watches the show and 
he knows a lot about this place that uh, I don't know. First of all, we're still at Bademia, and you told me I shouldn't leave here without trying a few things. Absolutely not. This Thank is called go. Gurda Masala. It's goat kidney, it's yes. mutton kidney. And you're saying the organs is, is what this place is known for here? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, that's hardcore. I love organs. Precisely. I should, I love this. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that liver hits you. Slowly. The liver hits you, then the spice hits you. So give it a bite with like the roti. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's, let's grab Please. a roti. I love organ meat because uh -huh. it, it, there's some chewiness to yeah, it. Yeah, always, yeah. Yeah, and, and then and then some, a little snap, like what's in here? It's Just kidney. mutton kidney, yeah, that's all. That's awesome. I think this is better than the mutton I had tonight. Like, this this is, is amazing. For, yeah, yeah. This is amazing. This place does their organs the best, like it's really good. I just feel like I want to keep going because it is so addictive, that flavor, that texture. What else do we get? We should try some of the brain. <laughs> Did you just say brain? Just brain, yeah. Okay. Let's be blunt. I'm uh, I've always uh, been known to to fare well with brains. I mean, maybe because I don't have a big one, but uh, uh, and uh, also I'm not a zombie, so tip brain typically is not my favorite. That's just a big piece of brain right there. Very buttery. Mm -hmm. The brain by itself, mm -hmm. and the masala is on one point. All right, I'm I'm gonna. You want that big piece of brain? It's yours. <laughs> All right. Cheers, my friend. All right, if, if I can just bypass the psychological hurdle uh -huh. that I'm eating a piece of brain, um, it's not bad, like, it's creamy. Right. And it doesn't have a bad aftertaste. Like uh -huh. I remember my first time eating brain in Taiwan, there was just a horrific aftertaste. But this, the aftertaste is kind of like what we had with the organs. Yeah. Nice, the, the, the spices kick up, so it, it's pretty good. It's all about that spice. Yeah, probably the least worst brain I've had. And that, that's pretty good. That's, I think that's the best I can do. And something else you said was good here that we didn't get was the tiki masala. The chicken tikka masala. Chicken yeah. masala. Yeah, I, yeah. I actually asked you. I thought that was just like a like a you know Americanized version of that dish. I've, I've had the Americanized version of th that right. dish, so I can't wait to taste the authentic version here. So we're gonna get we, that somewhere yeah, we else. We'll get some, yeah, for okay. sure. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep on. The food tour continues because this guy showed up and he knows some other other places we should try. Uh, before we go eat our next meal, this is what this leaf. It's called a beetle leaf, uh -huh. and they have a lot of sweet. Mouth freshness, which are stuffed inside the leaf. That is gulkan. It's rose petals, which are cooked down in sugar. Rose petals. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. And there's different types of. Pot, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we're gonna eat the the really cool fire pond. Fire pond. Yo, I saw this on Facebook. They like they put it. They put the fire in your mouth, and it's supposed to like be okay. Um, if I cannot make another video after this, you'll know what happened. You'll know something went wrong with this experiment here. Okay. Oh, well, now it's on fire. Really refreshing, really minty, really refreshing. Mm. I didn't get burned. That's that's like that's all good for me. All right, this restaurant we're at is called what is this place? It's called Delhi Darbar. And this is good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's legit. All right, so our food has come. What is all this stuff? Chicken tikka masala, and these are reshmi tikkas. They're chicken tikkas, a marination of a lot of coriander, mint, and a lot of other green vegetables. Okay. These are butter garlic naan. Butter garlic naan. Yeah, yeah. I just want to take a look at this. I just want to see if it looks different than the tikka masala in the U.S. As you can see from the from the piercing hole here, this is this is a, a skewer. Yeah, it yeah. is somatandur. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's a moment, isn't it? You you know you know what's gonna happen to me now is that I, I when I was in Vietnam, mm. I could no longer eat. After I got back to the U.S., I could no longer eat pho. Oh. Now I can no longer eat tandoori chicken. I can no longer eat chicken tikka masala. And I don't know whatever. I don't know. After I eat this nun, I might not be able to eat nun back in the states either. Because L let's hope you don't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like the biggest difference is this has way more depth of flavor than, does, than, yeah. than, than what we had in the US. So the tikkas are made first. They make the tikkas first and then they add it to the sauce. So you taste the, 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 the nice roasted flavor of the chicken. Yeah. And what I noticed right away is that this, it's creamy. It, it's very, it's really very creamy. creamy, very creamy. Like you don't have that creamy flavor in the tikka masala back in the states. Like right. then, you, and then the heat, the heat yeah. really just, just you know, mm -hmm. like it punches you around the mouth. I gotta try this again here. Yeah. You start with some of the naan, for sure. Juicy, mm. seasoned, flavor perfectly to the Absolutely. last last morsel. Oh man, gotta get some of this. Oh, look at this. If you're finding it salty, add some lime, just a little bit, balance it out. Can I give you one of these? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I forgot about that. Oh man. You taste that mustard oil? 
plus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I love how they crunched it. The, the, the outside is a little tiny yeah, yeah, yeah. bit charred. But it's very juicy yeah. towards the inside of it is, yeah. Bite into it, it's juicy. You taste the mint and you're like, okay, that might be it. Chicken mm. mint. But then, oh, a little more. But then, you know, a couple bites, couple bites more, the smokiness yeah. flavor. Like yeah. it just continuously right, right. hits you. The mustard is the real game. The mustard oil that they use is the real game. That mustard is mm. crazy. crazy. Right, I gotta try this non before I get cold. Try some yeah. of the chutney. Oh, this mint flavor is insane. And no wonder you're saying this is like one of the best restaurants is, in the is. city, right? Wait till you try the biryani. So this is the best biryani in all of Mumbai. Isn't it traditional biryani? Yeah, I'll tell you guys why it's not a traditional biryani. All the biryanis here are sold out. Except Bond. for this one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the good okay. stuff's at the bottom. The good stuff's at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, are you, yeah. do, you, do you mix it with the rice? No, or? it's, you make the sauce first. Uh -huh. So you stew it for a while. Uh -huh. And then you put the rice on top. And then you cook it for a while. You cover it from the top. It's called dumb cooking. So the rice cooks within the flavor of the chicken underneath. So it, it's different how? The traditional biryani has a specific biryani masala. Or uh, specific spices. Right? Very yeah. specific spices. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. The meat is a real game because this game, yeah, have your. It's kind of like tasting a fragrance. It's not even like chewing rice, it's like chewing a, a fragrance. Fragrance, yeah. That meat is to die for, really. That chicken. Oh my god, please tell the chef, like, he, he, he just won the world. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't give him the world, but if I could, he'd get it. If you never had Indian food in India, and you love Indian food, you need to come here, like tomorrow. Hang on. Oh my God. I'm gonna try to describe what just happened here so I'm not just kind of crazy, all right? The chicken, first of all, it's just mm. freaking insanely tender. And whatever that concoction of spices, is, right. it's unlike anything I've ever had before. Every tikka will give you something different entirely. Just every single cell of that chicken is just exuding flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exuding Absolutely. It. But with the rice, like even just a couple of grains of rice in my mouth, like just chewing on that, just releases the fragrance everywhere. So you guys see how easy that cut through? It's almost like a snap when it cuts through the chicken. It's creamy, isn't it? It's just something I never had. You want to try some pickle? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try anything. It doesn't really go with any of the food here, but uh -huh. since it's here, I definitely want you to try it out. Yeah. Oh, he's a prank me, man. <laughs> that is sour. <laughs> like, really, really sour. It's got some crazy um, spices in there, too. Yeah. So after that, it's like, it's like I'm eating the rice new again. Yeah, absolutely. It's called a... It's called a Taste Buds Born Again sauce. <laughs> All right, we're, we're gonna... We're gonna let everyone else get a chance to eat because they've been staring at us like with hatred in their eyes. Oh, well, uh, let's not. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, I, at this point, I'm so selfish right now, I don't even wanna share the chicken, but you gotta share, you gotta share food. So we'll be back. So thank you so much, y'all, for showing me this place. And by the way, guys, also uh, meet Mehek. This is y'all's girlfriend. Thank you both so much. It was so great meeting you guys and being able to just dine with you and show me this, this gym of a place, which you guys should definitely go to. Again, guys, everything I had today is listed in the description box below. And once again, you guys are such a pleasure. And I think we're gonna eat again uh, in a couple of days, sure, hopefully. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they just introduced me to this big, mat, monstrous dish that I might need some help with, and they're gonna come and help me. Uh, but it's such a pleasure meeting you guys and eating with you guys. And thank you guys so much for watching. And until we eat again, the mustard. Mustard.